My name's Dave DeBow, founder of MoneyPartnerFormula.com, and this show is built for everyday real estate investors who are actively doing deals and looking to scale using other people's money. So if you're an active real estate investor and you want to get featured on this show to talk about your own real estate and capital raising experiences, then just go to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now let's get rolling with this episode and remember to subscribe for daily interview content. Hey, hey folks, welcome back. Today we've got a newer real estate entrepreneur zooming in from just north of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we've got Aaron Piricelli, who is focusing on long-term rentals with single family homes. She's also got a short-term rental going and she's also focusing on her home state of Georgia. So we're going to have a talk about that, what she's up to with real estate investing. And now that she's starting to get into the capital raising thing, side of things, we'll talk about that a little bit as well. So Aaron, welcome to the show. Great to have you. Oh, thanks for having me, Dave. Nice to meet you finally. And we practiced your last name a few times and I think I still messed it up. That's okay. <laughs> All right. I've very had good. <laughs> so Aaron, give us a little snapshot of what does real estate mm -hmm. investing look like for you? What are you guys active in? What does the portfolio look like? What kind of properties do you own? Well, I have partnered up with a commercial real estate attorney. My partner, she lives in New Jersey. Okay. And we were in a different mentorship group together. We were in the RAIN Women's Real Estate Investing Mentorship together. We didn't meet there. And then we met at the beginning of this year in another real estate investment mentorship called REI Volt Mentorship. Yep. So we both were private money lenders in the RAIN network. So that's both where both of us started. As we were learning, we were putting some money to work. I know she's using um, a self-directed IRA. Mm -hmm. And then she also has used a home equity line to do some lending. And then I've used some different strategies as well. So we had that in common and figured we might as well make some passive income yeah. while we're learning to make active income. So were you investing primarily in flips or what kind of deals were you guys investing in? We're doing a long-term rental. Well, when I, when you um, were a private lender, what were you? What yeah, were you we on? are investing in a lot of long-term rentals. Oh, okay, cool. As joint venture partners or? No, we had done it separately. And then when we met um, and then got into another real estate mentor group, we're like, oh, maybe some of these deals had we learned more, we wouldn't have gotten into, but here yeah, we are. Yeah, here <laughs> you are, live and learn, exactly. Yeah, okay, the learning very, process. Very cool. And so over, over the last year and a half or so, is that when you've started really kind of purchasing properties for yourselves? Yes. So there is a uh, Georgia division of the RAIN group. So I had met another partner there. We have the, an Airbnb in North Georgia together. So we bought that together. We're, we're part managing it and we use a management company as well, but they just don't cover all facets. Mm-hmm. Luckily, we're only like an hour, hour and a half from there. So, and then we use it a lot for personal use as well, which is oh, nice. There you go. Bonus, yeah. Bonus, yes. It's a, it's a lovely place to go visit. And then when I met my partner at the beginning of this year, my newer partner, the one from I had Jersey. done the one from New Jersey. I had yeah. already done some private money lending with an investor in Macon, Georgia. So he bought three properties repaired them and then have them as long-term rentals. He ended up also moving to Macon and living in one of the properties. And he kept calling me and telling me there's another house in the street that's turned over. There's Airbnbs, there's big pickleball tournaments. They're building an amphitheater. So there was just a lot up and coming in Macon. And mm -hmm. he lives there and was looking to do his own project. So as we met, we were looking at a couple areas to maybe do co-living. And then after talking with him, we're like, why not? just continue in the same area that we know is working. So we acquired three properties at the beginning of um, May this year in Macon. Two of them are long-term rentals. We have one with a group home where we rent it out to an individual who comes in and furnishes it mm -hmm. and maybe has elderly people or special needs people. And then they have a house manager nice. and she manages all of that. And that's really great for us because she signed a three-year lease with us. Plus she's, she's in charge of everything, right? So it's, he's it's in charge more, of managing it and more of a commercial type lease. So she's on the hook as well for any repairs or damages and things like that. Yeah. And then she, our, um, 
you know, Bob that we work with down there that handles the rehab and manages the properties. She's just been great to deal with. You know, nice. she asked for some extra things to be done to the house because of the way she wanted to use it. So we negotiated some of that stuff with her. Mm -hmm. And then we have a third one that was already a four bedroom, two bath that was been used for a co-living. Yeah. And so we're turning it back into co-living and the situation oh, so had been co-living, taken out of co-living, rented out as a regular house. And now you guys are, well, we just, so there were a lot of really bad rehabs going on in Macon. Mm. Like they're using contact paper that looks like LVP flooring mm. and sticking it all over the floor. So when you get pictures, now we know when you look at pictures, but the first was a surprise when we went into the house. Wow. So it, it was not a nice place. So we we fixed it up. We added another room and then we furnished it pretty inexpensively. So now it's five bedrooms. Is that correct? So now it's five bedrooms, two nice. baths. Yeah. And the people that are hanging out in the area on the street um, are asking us about living there. Hey, we're just waiting for you to get the house done because we want to move back in. We used to live there. So kind of a unique situation for a rental and <laughs> we, they have become a resource for us. They're helping clean it up the yard. We're paying them day laborers. They referred us electricians. They referred us a plumber. So are you going to rent it out as a co-living space? Is that what, what I'm hearing? Yeah. So you we're renting rent by the room. Okay. One of the guys that's gotten, you know, uh, pretty friendly with our, our manager that lives down there. It's like, Hey, we're looking to get in here. We can live here. Everybody's got money. Everybody gets debit cards at the beginning of the month. We have the money to pay. So we had been talking with pad split anywhere. So it's pad split that's not in a core location. So they're trying to, so in Atlanta, pad split is a core location, which just oh. means they're going to handle everything ah. as far as the tenants. So, so Macon's a little bit of a smaller market for them. They're not really established there yet. Is that what I'm hearing? Right. So yeah. they'll do, they will help us do some marketing to fill the rooms and they will collect the money, but that's really all they would do in Macon. So they so just kind of prov provide the, the infrastructure, but not so much of the actual hands-on support. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. They're much more involved and they get involved with the municipalities and things like that in the bigger cities like they are in Atlanta. Got it. So after, and we, you know, we're following their guidelines and we also get the listed on their website, you know, take a picture of each room and they, they help us approve it. So we planned it that way. And then we found out that two of the people don't have a bank account. So the workaround was either paying 12 to 16 weeks of rent up front, which they don't have, or we had a basically guarantee that they were going to pay. Mm. So with that turn of events, we decided we're just going to manage it ourselves and do it on a monthly basis. Versus and we're about, weekly, which is what pad split. Yeah. Does, which is, is what pad split does. So we're going to do it monthly and those people are moving in this week. So that's a new exciting yeah. experience so that we self are manage that much more hands-on have you got the five tenants already lined up for that new property we have five and a waiting nice. list oh nice yeah Good. and so you know we um we've decided to continue in that area it's it's nice for a couple reasons that we do have the long-term rental to fall back on mm. we're getting the houses for between 50 and a hundred thousand so they're like Less expensive houses. The rehab is anywhere from 15 to 25. Insurance is becoming a little difficult. So we're looking a little more closely at some of the roofs because they are early 1900 build some of the houses. Oh, wow. Yeah. So insurance because of water, because of rain. What, what's the biggest issue in, in the that? The biggest area? issue is old roofs. Hmm. Okay. The first question that we're getting from insurance companies when we give them the address and they see how old it is, is how old's the roof? You know, they're looking at Google Maps. They're trying to find, we, we literally have been arguing with people on Google Maps about, I can see shingles missing. I don't, I don't see what you're seeing. And like, we're like, we have people that are physically there. They won't take a roof inspection. 
if they don't have a certification of it being newer, really, they want it replaced. Huh. Yeah. So that's, that's a little bit of a challenge. Okay. So that I've, I've got my head around two of the three properties. What's the third property? You got the, the third one that's sublet as a, as a group home. You got the new co-living space that you're going to self-manage. What's the third one? It's just a boring old long-term rental. Just a single family rental. Just house. a single family. Yeah. So just so people who aren't familiar with the different options, this is perfect because you got three scenarios there, right? You got a traditional rental to a family You've got a uh, situation where you are leasing it to a shared housing operator. And then you've got the third situation where you're renting by the room with this co-living space. So are you open to sharing what, what the price rent differential is between the three of those? Like how much does the single family rental go for? How much does the, are you leasing the other one out for? And what do you anticipate bringing in from the uh, co-living space? Well, knowing what we do with the group home, we would definitely increase what we ask for something like that down the road. Okay. Because we're getting, I think, sixteen fifty, which is the higher end of the rent in that area. Mm -hmm. But she's getting a lot of financial assistance, and then she's also getting money from the tenants. So we probably could have gone higher negotiating a different term down the road for something like that. You know, something, again, we're learning while we're there. Yeah. We're cash flowing probably four to 450 a month with that, which is still nice for a long-term yeah. rental. Yeah. Um, the second one, the, the regular long-term rental, that one is 1495 mm -hmm. and we're cash flowing like right around the $300 mark. I mean, mm -hmm. nothing crazy, but it's a, you know, safer, lower, lower yeah. risk investment. And then the nice thing about the co-living is we're cash flowing there a little over a thousand dollars. Yeah. Big difference. So we did put, now we furnished a five bedroom, two bath with full size beds, minimal like tile mirrors that stick on the wall, bed frame, bed, mattress cover, lamp, side table. Um, the one room that didn't have a closet, we bought like a mobile wardrobe a little tiny two person kitchen table. And we bought about $300 worth of cleaning supplies and supplies to get people set up. And we spent $2,100 for that. So very oh. inexpensive. Now that is something that pad split requires, but we've decided going forward, if we do other co-living areas, self-managed, we're probably going to, we're going to supply those same, you know, materials for the people. There are definitely people in, need that are in a rough situation there some of the people that are moving in are basically like squatters in a house that has no water and no electricity yeah yeah so you're doing you're doing well and you're doing good at the same time we're trying yes yeah trying yeah. to yeah so Aaron, i've spoken market. to a few other people in the co-living arena recently and one of the things that i've heard a few of them say that they do that really helps internally with with those properties right because mm -hmm. there's always a concern of you know sharing kitchen sharing laundry facilities sharing bathrooms all of that's a potential hassle with five people in in one five very different people under one roof so right. one of the things that they've done that made a lot of sense to me was each room gets a small bar fridge mm -hmm. as well as a microwave oven and it was really interesting is that because i was asking about that okay how do you know what what about sharing fridges and people still in each other's stuff and da 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 da, da. he said hardly anybody uses the kitchen almost everybody just has their stuff in their little fridge in the room and microwaves and and that's how they take care of of that so they have very few conflicts with that sort of thing so what, what are your, are you guys planning to do anything like that or just kind of? Well, we it? have, we have thought a lot about it. We have yeah. looked in Atlanta as well, because there are, there's a network of, I think six women here in Atlanta doing a pad split plus type scenario where they're keeping the common areas. They're furnishing like a nice living room. They're, you know, furnishing the kitchen, putting more stuff. And then they're providing 
a flat screen TV, mm-hmm. a mini fridge, and a desk in every room. And yeah. they're keeping it more six room, two, three bathrooms, more business professionals. Yeah. So that's something that we went back and forth with. We, at the end, decided to not even put a washer and dryer in this mm-hmm. particular unit because we feel like it's going to be used and abused. Yeah. And then the precedent has been set of you're supposed to have a working washer or dryer. So now that we're six months in and it's broken, now we have to supply another one. Mm-hmm. So we're kind of playing by ear each house and each neighborhood. Yeah. It, and then same thing. We're like, okay, do we provide a mini fridge that we're never going to see again? And right. then the people are always it out on the, on the street clientele, right? Because because they're not being uh, a damage deposit, I'm sure, or anything like that. Right. So yeah. they generally are out in the street having an open air market. When we bought the house, before we started rehab on it, the hot water heater was stolen, which you know isn't something you can stick in your purse. So we're probably like the hot water heater is probably sitting out in that market. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's the exact comment kind of. Tenant clientele, I would really rather not have. That's for sure. But hey, right. If, if if you can make a go of it and it's not that much of a nightmare dealing with these kind of folks, all the power to you. And it's it's kind of there's like a hierarchy on the block. There's one main guy, Lee, who's seems to be running the show. We, like I said, we have got people in a waiting list. The guy's like, if you get another house, I've got it filled. I've got the people ready ready to move in so as long as he's being a resource to us and he's cooperating with us and he can quote unquote keep the other people in line keep things running smooth there then you know we'll see it definitely is going to be you know something different for us i guess that's in a bit of an edgy side of town is that would that be fair to say that is definitely an edgy side of town yeah 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 cool so as we're wrapping up here aaron if uh, what what are your plans for the next six to 12 months? Where, where are you guys heading with your real estate investing? We are digging our heels in pretty deep in Macon. We've got two about to close, two we're trying to negotiate contracts with. We would like to do a pad split plus more in the outskirts of Atlanta and maybe have a little different clientele. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it doesn't all of it can come with different headaches, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. A bigger price tag as well. Awesome, Aaron. If people want to connect with you and find out more about what you're up to, what should they do? Yes, just my name, Aaron Perselli at gmail.com would be the easiest way to connect with me. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Dave. All right, everybody. Take care and we'll see you on the next episode. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed that episode. And as always, if you want to listen to more daily interview content, make sure you subscribe. And if you're an active real estate investor and you're doing deals and you'd like to get featured on this show, then just head over to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now at MoneyPartnerFormula.com, we help real estate investors to create a process for predictably getting capital so they can do more deals without relying on hard money lenders or the banks. We do this by building them a private capital marketing system. Now, if you want help turning yourself into a big money capital attraction machine, then book a call with our team to see how we can help. Just visit moneypartnerformula.com to find out more. All right, take care and we'll see you on the next interview.